Shall we turn to Daniel chapter 12, verses 2 and 3? We'll be looking at Daniel chapter 12 tonight in our Through the Bible study, but this morning I'd like to concentrate on a couple of verses, 2 and 3. The angel said to Daniel, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to, to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They that be wise. James in his epistle, chapter 3, verse 13, said, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show it by the way he lives, in good works, meekness, and in wisdom. And then he tells us that there is a wisdom that does not come from God. It is earthly, it is sensual, it is devilish, and it's marked by bitter envy and strife in a person's heart. There are those who are competing for glory, for fame, for recognition, in this world, they want to shine as stars. And in this endeavor to outshine another, so often there is that bitter envy and strife in their hearts. This is not true wisdom. The harboring of bitterness and envy will produce, among other things, ulcers. It produces tension. It destroys relationships. James contrasts this earthly, devilish wisdom with the wisdom which is from above. Concerning this wisdom, he said it is pure, it is peaceable. It is gentle, it is easy to entreat, and it is full of mercy and good fruit. Earthly wisdom will lead to strife, to envy, to bitterness. Heavenly wisdom will bring forth peace, love, mercy. Man so often measures wisdom by how much of the material things a man has been able to bring under his control. We say, oh, he is a wise businessman. He is extremely successful. He's been able to control so many businesses, bought out other businesses, expanded is what wisdom this man has. And they will usually admire that person's skill and ability to manipulate others for his own benefit. Their admiration is usually not dimmed by the deceitful ways that were used to gain these riches. I often hear Madonna being touted as a very wise and astute business person. They say she's probably one of the wisest stars in Hollywood as far as business goes. And she's held in great admiration by millions of people throughout the world. Little girls all over the world are seeking to emulate her, for she is their shining star. And they wear the black lace and the earrings and heavy makeup because of their admiration for her. 
But James surely hit the nail right on the head when he said of the worldly wisdom, it was sensual. One of these days, sooner or later, Madonna is going to die. For the scriptures declare it is appointed unto man once to die. But then the scriptures said after that, the judgment. And though she may shine as a star in this world, if she does not give her life to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that there is reserved for her the mist of darkness forever. She may shine brightly in this world and be acclaimed as a star, but the eternal darkness awaits everyone who does not know and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord. To shine as a sex symbol in this world certainly has limited duration. How sexy can you be when you're a 95-year-old great-grandmother? <laughs> if she should live that long and have a family. Being generous, let's give her 30 years in the limelight as the sex symbol. But what is 30 years compared with eternity? And it is not wise to live for just the present, for the present glory of this world, for the pleasures of this world, which are always limited to a period of time. Moses, because he had a respect of eternal things, chose not the treasures of Egypt, but rather to suffer the affliction with the children of God, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than e Egypt because he had a respect of eternal values. He realized that the pleasures of this world were just for a moment but the joys of God's kingdom are eternal. Jesus spoke of the man who did not consider eternal things. He said that he was a fool, though he was considered wise by worldly standards. Jesus said there was a certain rich man who had become so successful that his only problem was where to store his goods. He had run out of room to store his riches. And he said, what shall I do? I'm increased with riches and with goods. And I can't store anymore. I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my storage bins. I'll big build larger storage houses in order that I might bestow all of my goods into them. And Jesus said, the Lord said to that man, thou fool, you're going to die tonight. And then who will spend all of your riches? The world was looking at this man and said, oh, isn't he wise? Look how he has accumulated so much. What a wise, shrewd person he is. But God said, what a fool he is. He's going to die tonight. He'll never spend all that he has amassed. Paul tells us in Corinthians that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. And any man who lives only to shine in this worldly sky and does not take eternity into consideration is a fool. The wise man will measure the activities of his life by eternity. What eternal value can come from this? Jesus spoke about laying up treasures in heaven rather than on the earth. 
For on the earth, your treasures can be robbed. They'll rust, they'll decay. Thieves can steal. But he said, lay up treasures in heaven where these things cannot touch them. They don't rust, they don't decay. Thieves can't break through and steal. And then he said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Paul in Colossians 3, verse 1 said, If you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. That's wisdom. Setting your heart, setting your affections on the eternal things rather than the temporal things that you're not going to be able to hold on to anyhow. As Daniel is speaking of those who are wise, he is speaking in the context of the resurrection and eternity. In verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. There is a resurrection. There is an eternity. And with some, everlasting life. Others, everlasting shame and contempt. The result of having true wisdom, the wisdom that is from above, Daniel tells us that they will shine as the brightness of the firmament. The firmament is really the atmosphere that surrounds our earth that is illuminated by the sun. You look outside and you see the light. The firmament about us, the atmosphere about us is illuminated by the fact that the sun came up this morning. And when your life is illumined by the Son of God, there is just a shining forth into the darkness of this world that takes place. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. And they were to let their light so shine before men that as men saw their good works, they would glorify their Father which was in heaven. But there is even greater shining than that of the atmosphere around us. And that is the light that emanates from the stars. Our sun is only a star, not even a large star. But we see the light that the sun can bring to this world, illuminating the darkness. We know how dark it can get when we have the absence of the sunlight. Down in the caves in the earth, organ caves, where they turn out all the lights and you experience total darkness. No light of the sun penetrating at all. Even the dimmer lights of the stars, not there. That total darkness. But how stars do illuminate. And Daniel goes on to say, They that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. The true and main purpose that God has left you here on this earth is that you might bear witness for him. You see, when you're a child of God, God loves you and he wants you to just enjoy his presence and the glories of his kingdom forever. It hurts him to have to leave you in this rotten earth to experience all the pain and the suffering that is around us. He would rather just bring you right on into glory that you might enjoy the blessings of that. But if he did, every time a person would accept the Lord, if they were immediately translated into glory, then he'd have no one here to witness for him. So he's left you here as his witness, and that's really the only purpose of leaving you in this miserable earth, is that you might bear witness 
of his love and grace to other people around you. This world that is ruled by sin is filled with sorrow, pain, suffering, death. And being a Christian does not exempt you from these things. Because I have received Jesus Christ doesn't mean that I will not experience sorrow, pain, death. But it does mean that I will have the power to joyfully endure these things. Many times the greatest witness that you can give to the world around you is the joy and the peace that you exhibit in the midst of great trials and suffering. The joy and peace that comes from fully committing yourself to the Lord. You say, well, it's all in the Lord's hands. My life is in his hands. And I know that there is good that is going to come from this experience because I'm his child. He's called me according to his purpose. And thus, I know that he is going to bring good out of this horrible situation. And that peace and that joy and that confidence that you have in Jesus Christ in the midst of heavy suffering is often the strongest witness that your life can give to the world around you. And that is why God sometimes allows us to go through these experiences of suffering and pain. That as we receive that strength of Christ, and that power of His Spirit within our lives to endure these things, then our lives become a real witness to others. And they say, I don't know how you can have such joy. I don't know how you can have such peace when your whole world seems to be falling all around you. You've lost this, you've lost that, you've lost your business, you've lost your home. How can you still be joyful? Because my joy is not in material things. My joy is that I know the Lord. That my name is found written in the book of life. When the disciples came back to Jesus, they said, oh man, it's been great, Lord. Even the devils were subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your name is found written in the book of life. You may find some devils that aren't Yielding to your authority. But if your rejoicing is in Jesus Christ, that won't matter. You'll know that he is in control of all things. The witness of your life is often much stronger than your words. Many times your words are nullified by your actions. If you are witnessing to your friends of the peace that Jesus brings, peace that passes human understanding, and the next situation that arises, you go into a panic. They're not going to pay much attention to what you've told them about how glorious the peace is that one can have in the Lord. But if you exhibit peace under great pressure, then your witness is verified. And they are far more apt to listen to you when they see it lived out in your life. I believe that the purpose of God allowing us to go through heavy trials is many times that our lives might bring glory to him by his power to sustain us and keep us in the most difficult of situations. And what a powerful witness it is when you obey the scriptures and they see you rejoicing in tribulation. I think of the powerful witness that was given to this community by our organist when she, respect, when she requested actually to speak to the man who sought to rape her and slashed her throat. She desired to witness to him of the love of Jesus Christ and of the forgiveness that he could have if he would just ask Jesus into his heart and life. 
And she gave to him a Bible that he might take it with him to prison. It was such a powerful witness that it made front page of some of the newspapers. What a witness. Are you seeking to turn many to righteousness? Sometimes we accept that worldly view that religion is a very private and personal thing and should never be discussed with someone else. That is a lie of Satan to discourage you to witness to others. Your loved ones and your friends are going to face the eternal darkness without hope if you don't talk to them of the fact that Jesus gave his life that they might have forgiveness of sin and that they might be able to spend their eternity, eternity, in the glory of God's kingdom. What is the result of turning many to righteousness? It said they shall shine as the stars forever and ever. There are many who are striving for stardom in this world. <laughs> there are those that we refer to as superstars. And how many people aspire to this status? They live their whole lives dreaming of being a superstar. They picture themselves walking forward to receive the Oscar award and think of the clever things that they'll say to the adoring crowd. They want their name to be placed in lights, to place their name in the star in the front of the Grumman Chinese Theater they want to be placed in the Hall of Fame. They want to be known as being in who's who rather than who's he. <laughs> and there's no thought of eternity. They want to shine now in this world. What a marked contrast it is, though, shining in this world, being one of the superstars of this world, and shining as the stars forever and ever. I enjoy the 4th of July as much as anybody. I love to watch the fireworks. I love skyrockets. I love it when I hear the loud boom and I see the night sky illuminated by the brilliant burst of colors. And with the rest of the crowd, I say, ooh, ah. It's glorious, it's beautiful. And for a time, the brilliance of the skyrocket obliterates the stars from our view. But how quickly the flash is over and there is nothing left but ashes. There are some people that want to shine like a skyrocket. They want to make a big flash, a big splash in the worldly scene. But so quickly it all fades and their life is nothing but ashes. It used to be that we would go with the family down on the beach in Huntington and watch the fireworks displays that they would put off from the end of the pier. We'd be there on the blanket in the sand watching the glory of these splendid displays of color and flashes of glory. But when the last skyrocket had exploded and had become ashes, as we would just wait there in the sand for a while, just sort of reflecting on the fireworks display. As soon as our eyes became accustomed to the darkness again, once more we would see the stars twinkling up there in the sky. Their glory obliterated for a while, but there they are, going on. They that are wise shall shine like the firmament and those who lead many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. 
You see, the one, the big difference is the one is temporal, the other is eternal. But real wisdom would dictate that you not live for temporal things. Real wisdom would dictate that you would live for eternal things. Thus, they that are wise will shine as the firmament and will lead many to righteousness that they might shine as the stars forever and ever. In which sky do you want to shine? Shall we pray? Father, help us this day to take and to evaluate life, the temporal versus the eternal. And help us, Lord, that we might shine as the stars forever and ever in the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand? You might be on your way to stardom today. One way or the other. It may be that you have ambitions to star in this world. Your goals are all set. But oh, how temporal and shallow that is, how quickly it will become ashes, how much better to shine as the stars forever and ever in God's kingdom. If you haven't yet received Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of your sins, his mercy and grace, I would encourage you, go back to the prayer room. Counselors and pastors will be back there to pray with you. You can start a new life a path that leads to the eternal glory of God's kingdom. You can start it this day. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you. May you have a wonderful week as we anticipate the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ by which our hope was transferred from just a hope to a living hope. As Peter said, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And may the Lord just prepare your hearts for that glorious day when he will receive us unto himself to the eternal kingdom. And may we there shine as stars in God's glory forever and ever.